afternoon. I'm Rashi Khosla. I'm founder and CEO of Mars Solutions Group. My team and I are very excited about this event today, and we really appreciate all of your time in being with us here today. So 2020 exactly hasn't been a most normal year for any of us, but for Mars, it has been an amazing year of growth. So we have a lot here to be thankful for. And while we were experiencing this 50% growth in our core business offerings of staffing, going through those growing pains with expanded teams, with process and technologies, I had this crazy idea over summer to launch returnship in a formal way. It's something that we had been doing uh, for a number of years in a very informal way. I was worried that my team would just diffuse this idea as another one of my crazy ones, uh, and especially given how busy we all were at the time. But I'm very happy that not only everybody connected a line, but they could see the purpose behind this idea. It's taken Herculean amount of efforts to be coming to this stage where we're one week away from graduating our first formal cohort. We started from ideation phase in July and to be here uh, so quickly, we could not have done this without our A team at Mars. This returnship team is hardworking, they are compassionate, they are agile, and they are very smart people. And I have a pleasure of introducing the leader of that team, Mary Beckfield. Mary has a unique advantage in this role. She has worked and held IT executive roles at various large corporations, including Kraft Foods, but has also maintained her passion for the area of education and serves as a professor at DePaul University. So in essence, she brings in that unique perspective or a blend from that academia, as well as that industry experience to this role at Mars. I could not have asked for a better champion for this program than Mary. So please join me in welcoming Mary Backfield, who's going to be MC for our event today. Thank you again. Thanks, Rashi. I'm excited to be here and to meet all of you who I have not met before. Thank you for joining us today. As Rashi mentioned, I've been in IT in the industry for a number of years and last fall decided to retire so I could spend some time doing stuff that I enjoy. And giving back to the profession that's given me so much is one of those things. So I'm gonna share my screen and take you through um, the agenda for today and kick us off. Okay, Abby, just process check, you can see the screen, correct? Yes. Thank you. All right, so I am so thrilled to be here and to have had the opportunity to be part of the Returnship Program. And I'm thrilled that you're all here with us so that we can share a bit more. I'm gonna take you through a brief setting of the stage a little more um, to what Rashi shared about how this program came about. And then we'll dive right in to having our two teams present what they've accomplished in a very short time in three months. After each presentation, we've allotted and set aside five minutes for any questions or comments you may have about the presentations. After we get through both presentations and Q&A sessions, we're going to take about 10 minutes and break everybody up into uh, various breakout rooms and give all of us a chance to just casually mingle, maybe make some new connections, chat a little bit about what we've seen or just whatever's at the top of our mind on a Friday. Um, after those 10 minutes, we will bring you back to this main room where Nathan Ross from Mars will wrap it up and announce two raffle winners. So in case you are not aware, just as a token of our appreciation of you taking the time out to be with us today, we're gonna raffle off two $100 gift cards. So two lucky winners will um, receive the gift cards. Now pay attention because to win, you do need to be present. So that's one of those little ground rules we have. And then finally, we do expect to end maybe 10 minutes or so early from the scheduled time. 
So for those of you who have to leave and get about your day, feel free at that point. For those of you who want to stick around, have an opportunity to meet and greet the cohort in a smaller, more casual setting, please feel free to hang around and we'll give that opportunity to you. Okay, so a couple of other points to note as we're all used to by now, please mute your microphone if you are not speaking so that we can have the best possible audio experience, especially with so many people on the call and hold your questions until Q&A. When we do get to the Q&A part, you can either put your question in the chat feature or on the lower right hand of your screen under the participants, you can just raise your hand and we'll, we'll get to you. All right. As Rashi said, she had this idea in July, but, and she has this vision and passion for it, but where did it come from? Like, why do we have this need to begin with? And I would say through the course of my career, I can personally attest to the fact that the percentage of women who are in the IT professional field has been steadily declining. So computer science, IT related fields, part of the STEM fields, women have not been keeping pace as a percentage of the professionals. So we're now down to being 25% of the IT professionals from about 31% in 1993. So what's going on? I mean, women are 50% in the US of the college educated workforce, but what's happening? Where are they going? Uh, there's a whole number of root causes, right? But one thing we do know is 40% of women who become mothers either reduce their hours or take time off for family care. And 2.6 million women have master's degrees and or PhDs and right now are not working outside of the house. Now, I'm not proposing that we take women away from their children and their family duties, not at all. That's not what returnship's about. But what it is about is the fact that Three in five women who are in this situation of having left the IT workforce, when they return, end up either underemployed or in lower skilled jobs, or maybe not in IT at all. It's hard for them to get back into the profession for some reason. And yet as hiring managers, I, I know one thing I've found over the years is it's got progressively harder and harder to find mid-career talent when I had that chair open, right? You know, how do we find high potential, really smart, quick people to fill that chair? And I would say at Mars, what we believe is there's a real return to work opportunity here. You know, there's three plus million women ready to return to work, maybe more right now. Um, yet as hiring managers, there's this gap. Somehow we're not getting connected to this tremendous talent pool that's out there. And on the other side, the women, are struggling to get connected to us. So how do we bridge that gap? And that's really what Returnship is about. It's about providing an on-ramp for women who wanna return. And what you'll see with our returners today is we've given them that on-ramp by giving them real job. Like they've come into our organization. We gave them projects that we needed done and got them back into the groove of working, gave them a chance to catch up on what's changed in technology since they've been away for a little bit kind of get that, you know, back in that rhythm. And then on, this, on the other hand, working with employers in the area to make them aware of this tremendous talent pool and helping everyone recognize that, you know, we do, and I have to admit I'm guilty of it too. We've had this bias in our hiring process against people with gaps in their resumes. So helping to explain what's gone on there, helping employers understand, well, okay, great. I see there's this pool here, but how do I bring them into my organization? How do I make them successful? How do I onboard them for the best opportunity for both of us? So with that said about what the program's all about, I'm really excited and happy to introduce at this time our cohort, our first cohort for the returnship. We launched on September 1st. We have 11 members who you're about to hear from. 30 years of prior combined technology experience they bring a whole host of education and degrees and smarts. And I will say after working with these ladies for three months, I've been so impressed with their drive, their ability to learn, their ability to get back in the technology quick and pick it up and problem solve and go figure stuff out just independently. 
and their collaborative spirit. It has been a pleasure working with them and I'm thrilled to present the first team to you. And I will turn it over to them. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, thank you, Abby. Guess we can get started. Yes, we can see. I've never thought of myself as a female engineer or founder or woman in tech. I just think of myself as someone who's passionate. This powerful quote resonated with us as a team because passion is the driving force behind success. As women of diverse backgrounds, we each have a variety of skill sets, experiences, and a unique story which led us to becoming returners in the technology field. Sharing the desire to achieve something great gave us the passion to work towards this project. So we welcome you to our presentation and would like to introduce to you our hardworking Mars Full Stack team of developers, the Tech Gals. My name is Victoria. I help to guide the team as the Scrum Master. I am a graduate of UW-Madison and I entered into the field of software engineering through IC Stars program where I first learned to build a web-based app. Now through the Returnship program, I've expanded my learning in React and unit testing, and I enjoy learning new languages and challenging myself. Thank you. I'm Ashley. I have a master's in communication from UWM and a background in marketing and event planning. I received a certificate in full stack development in 2019 and recently worked as a front end developer for a major US retailer. For this project, I served as team lead and front end developer. In my free time, I play in a Euchre League, I volunteer with friends in Matic, and I'm a huge sports fan. Thank you. I'm Onam Jaboye. I have a bachelor's degree in accounting. Uh, in 2018, I relocated from Nigeria to the US. When I got to the US, I decided to try something new. Uh, I started learning how to code until I heard of a program called IC Stars. I was with IC Stars for four months. After my program with IC Stars, I started looking for other opportunities to learn and grow. And Mars gave me the opportunity. So for this team, I play the role of a developer and a change manager. So in my free time, I play chess. Thank you. Hi, I'm Suchitra Shreke. I'm a motivated programmer and software tester with four years of professional experience and a master's degree in computer engineering. In my professional break of five years, I volunteered at local events and took courses to keep with technology. I enjoy uh, doing puzzles with my kids I'm a firm believer in sincere teamwork to achieve great end results. I served as a backend developer for this team. Thank you. Hello all, I'm Bhavna Soni. I'm a certified QA and an experienced business analyst who is passionate about her work. To continue my passion during my professional break, I took some online trainings and learned some new tools to brush up my skills along with volunteer services in schools and participated in competitions like First Tech Challenge, First Lego League to keep myself updated. Thank you. Now that we have, now that we have introduced ourselves um, as a team, we would like to introduce to you the clients. Our client is Mars Solutions Group. Mars is a staffing agency that prides itself on having the best combination of speed and quality delivering candidates to its clients. Mars delivery team incorporates technical screening for candidates for jobs and has over 150 Martians to aid with the screening service. So now Ashley will explain to you the challenge that we face and how we help to solve that challenge. Now, let's see where the problem is. Recruiter Andrew has a group of candidates that he's submitting to a DevOps job. They all need to be screened for mid-level DevOps skills. To do this, Andrew has a list of potential screeners in an Excel doc with all their skills listed. Andrew has to manually go through this document to find DevOps screeners with the right experience level. 
This is very time consuming. There are many screeners, both internal and those 150 Mars consultants, as well as hundreds of skills. Once found, he has to email the screeners to determine if they're even interested in the screening and then get their schedules. Then he has to email each candidate to get their availability to ultimately schedule the screening. For CEO Rashi, this is not good. Andrew's spending too much time on administrative tasks and this is taking away from his ability to do his job, finding great candidates for open positions and ultimately making Mars money. This can also impact the ability to place candidates. If Andrew's not able to schedule a technical screening and submits a candidate anyway, Mars is compromising on the quality of candidates that are submitted to the client. This does not live up to Mars driving forces of speed and quality. Rashi has even considered hiring someone to do this administrative work for the recruiters. But Rashi does not have to hire someone because our product will fix this problem. Our product, which we're calling Zippy, works like a technical screening Uber. Andrew, our recruiter, can add candidates and jobs to the app. Then our tool automatically matches candidates and screeners based on job family and experience. Just like Uber matches riders and drivers based on location. Tara is a consultant and one of Mars clients with mid-level experience in DevOps. Tara wants to help out Mars and also earn some extra money by performing technical interviews of candidates. Tara will get an alert on her phone anytime a candidate is submitted that matches her job family and experience. For example, Tara will get an alert about those DevOps candidates that Andrew just submitted. Once logged into Zippy, Tara can then schedule the interview by adding a time slot automatically to the candidate's calendar. When finished, the screening results are added to the system. This gives Andrew more time to focus on recruitment. This also makes it easier for Tara. Consultants can easily add the app and begin screening right away. Ultimately, this makes Rashi happy. Now that we've explained a little bit about our product, our wonderful BA will show you how we got here. Ashley explained so well about Andrew's and Tara's problem with the solution. Let us talk about our approach we took to build our product, Zippy. I played business analyst role on this project. Uh, now let me take you why, how, and what we did to achieve our goal. We picked agile methodology to plan our project. We followed scrum ceremonies like sprint planning, daily meetings, reviews, retrospectives. We gathered ever-changing requirements from the stakeholders to understand business needs and objectives, created vision documents, business requirement documents, and user stories. Transitioned those into functionality using use cases, process flow, workflow, mockups, wireframe. For team collaboration, we use tools like Jira, SharePoint, GitLab, and after completion of every sprint, we took time to celebrate. Now, Victoria will give you some insight that how the application is built behind the scene. So, as you can see, this is the architecture structure of the diagram. And I know that there are a lot of pieces here and it's intricate and complex, but this, we're going to do a brief overview of all the pieces at a higher level. So when you look at this diagram, there are three major pieces. The first major piece at the bottom corner has GitLab instance. This is where we were able to store our code and share our code to work cohesively together as a team. Once changes to the code are made and approved, it gets compiled and deployed through a continuous integration process, which is called the CICD pipeline. This gets pushed to production and testing for the world to experience the application. Now, the next piece is the user interface. This is where the user sees and experiences when they load the application. That comes from this exact piece of the architecture. This user interface, um, it gets info from the services layer. Now, this services layer is the final piece and it contains all the data. This is a setup that allows the application to make changes to the data and receive the information behind it. So this is a visual of all the pieces necessary to deploy this app and a quick overview of the architecture. Next, Onam will explain to you in detail the technologies that we used. So oh, to get this project done, these were the tools that we used. For the authentication, we use Auth0. And for the user interface, that is the front end, we used React.js, we used a little bit of Bootstrap. And for the unit testing, we used Jest. 
And for the back end, we used Node.js and Express.js and MySQL database. So to share the code among the, the team, we used GitLab to share the code. Thank you. So right now, I would like to pass it on to Chuchitra. That was our technology stack. Uh, now let's uh, see some of our groundwork. For any non-tech people, this may be a little dry, but please stick with us. Uh, that said, this is the ER diagram of the physical model of our database. This design is in its third normal form. So we started by listing down fields that go into the database, categorizing these fields into their logical tables, establishing the dependencies between fields and tables, and then defining the primary and foreign keys for each of the table. To retrieve and persist data to the database, views and joins have been used. Uh, that way the database was refined from logical model to this physical model. Uh, and you see the results here. And that was a glimpse at our database. Uh, now let's say, uh, take a look at our application demo. Over to you, Ashley. I'm just gonna pull this up here. All right, so this is our app. This is Zippy, and this is where the recruiters can log in. This is where Andrew can log in using Auth0. And this is the recruiter dashboard. Andrew can search for a candidate. He can see candidates that are waiting to be screened, and he can also see all recent screenings. So let's click on Taylor here. From here, Andrew can see all the information he would need from the screening. He can see the candidate information here, the job position the candidate was submitted to, as well as all the screening results. And he can also export this as a PDF. So this is the end result. Let's show how we got here. Andrew can add a job to a system here. Things like client, recruiter, job title, job description. Matching screeners based on every single skill needed for a job and experience level would be not only incredibly tricky, but sometimes not always possible. So we decided to match screeners based on experience level and job family. Example of job family could be front end developer, full stack developer, DevOps. So Andrew will enter those here. Then Andrew also has the ability to talk about the specific skills needed for that position. So. If the job family is front end developer, Andrew can enter things like if it's React or Angular or Vue or anything like that. So this is how Andrew adds a job to a system. Now we'll show how he adds a candidate to the system and he can do that here. Uh, pretty basic, first name, last name, contact information. So let's say he's already added a candidate and he's got this candidate, Leslie. And Leslie is ready for her technical screening. Andrew's already interviewed her. He thinks she'll be a great fit for an open job. He really wants to submit her to the client, but he just wants to do a technical screening to make sure Leslie has those tech skills she says she does. When he clicks the add button, this is where he can add all the information that the screener would need to know. He types in that job ID and then all the job information will auto-populate. He can add the candidate's resume here. He can choose whether she prefers an audio or video screening, and then he can add the candidate's availability right to the calendar here. When Andrew's done, he hits submit, and all the technical screeners that match based on job family and experience will get an alert on their phones that there is a candidate who's ready to be screened. So for example, Tara, our uh, screener, will get that alert and she can log in here again using Auth0. So this is what the dashboard looks like for a technical screener. We can see her name here, her job families, her experience level, and her rating. She can see all the available candidates that are available to be screened. As you can see, she can see Leslie, that candidate that Andrew just submitted. So let's check Leslie out. Tara sees the job description. She can download Leslie's resume. She can see the specific skills. If she thinks it's a good fit, she can click on the calendar here and add a time slot right to Leslie's calendar. Let's go back home. If she did choose to choose Leslie for a screening, Leslie will now show up in her upcoming screenings here. And actually, Tara has a screening coming up right now with Ben. So let's go into the screening here. During the screening, Tara can enter every question she asks the candidate. She can rate the candidate's answers on one to five, and she can also write any notes. She can also evaluate the candidate's communication skills, and she can ultimately say whether or not she would recommend this candidate. 
when she hits submit, it'll take Tara back to her home. And it will also, all that information will now be in this system for recruiter Andrew to access. So this is what our final product will look like. We've gotten a really good start on it and I'm gonna sign out now and send it back to Shatucha who will talk about our deliverables. So, uh, so these are the deliverables uh, we worked on for last three months and this did not come without any challenges. Some of us, uh, some of uh, these challenges were unique to us as returners, uh, like getting used to working more than full time again while handling family responsibilities, uh, adjusting our families to new schedules, uh, especially while with uh, the pandemic situation going around. Uh, while the other challenges were common COVID challenges, uh, we had to build a strong team dynamics in a short period of time while work working virtually. You see, uh, it's much easier to uh, bond around water coolers and coffee machines uh, in an office setting, but it's quite a challenge to do so virtually. But I think what made us a strong team was that we went out of our ways to help, teach, and learn from one another. Every one of us uh, were at a different level of technical skills when we started. But I guess the peer support, the mentor support uh, helped us uh, learn a stack of new tools and technologies in a pretty short period of time. Uh, we also kept up uh, with the pace by watching videos, Googling, uh, taking Udemy courses and so on. So this was a little bit about the challenges we faced. Uh, now let's take a look at the future vision for Zippy. Okay, uh, let's take a quick look at the future of Zippy. Mass intends to make Zippy available to the marketplace so that way it can be accessible to freelancers, screeners beyond the Martians. As we move towards gig economy, our hope is that it will drive the cost down and quality up. As part of this envisioned future, Zippy will be used by clients other than Mars. Like Uber, our product will implement a rating system to check the performance of all the screeners. So right now, I would like to pass it on to Victoria. This concludes our presentation. We thank you so much for coming to see our presentation and experience this. We want to thank Mars Solutions Group for giving us returners the ability to return back to the technology field. And we want to thank the mentors for mentoring us, all of the supporters and the guest speakers. And now we would like to open the floor up for any questions. Hi, this is Shalini. I was just Hello. wondering how you guys discuss, uh, decide on the technologies to be used for this project. You're on mute. Uh, yeah, Shalini. Oh, I was just uh, curious, how did you guys decide on what uh, front-end technologies, what back-end, uh, why MySQL versus why Bootstrap? How did you guys decide on what technologies to use? Uh, so each technology uh, has their own uh, advantages and disadvantages, but uh, React has a good advantage on uh, single page applications. Uh, it, can, uh, it is a component based technology. So uh, it's easier uh, to learn and uh, implement in React with, with that uh, kind of technology that we have. Uh, Node.js uh, is coming up so well right now. It has uh, so many advantages like uh, it's event driven, it's asynchronous and it's, uh, it's it's scalable even though uh, you know yeah, even though it uh, it's it's a single threaded application but it's so scalable uh, so we 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 looked at these advantages uh, while picking up the technology uh, like uh, marsh right now uses uh, uh, my uh, sql server but uh, we found mysql is much better and compatible with what we are doing so we picked up mysql for backend and uh, we, we, we basically weighed on uh, each of the technologies to before picking up, uh, picking them up. 
I would like to add something. I will use React because of the speed, because it's flexibility and uh, we can actually reuse most of the component. And uh, the reason why we chose uh, MySQL database, we built uh, a dynamic page so, so that way we can actually take some data from the back end and front end here. Thank you. Great. Other questions? Hi, this is Kunal here. Uh, I just had a question. Actually, I had two questions here, right? So, uh, and the demo is great, by the way. So I really like the demo. Um, my question was, say this app becomes really popular, right? Like probably like, you know, reaches in terms of scalability of uh, indeed.com or dice.com. So with the that kind of growth of data, right? Like how do you guys think that is this application is going to scale or have you guys thought of any kind of roadmap if it like you know gets adopted like you know by millions um, ashley would you like to answer that sure sure i think we're focusing just now initially the first iteration of this app would be for those 150 um, martians that are at the clients who are doing the technical screening and yeah, I mean, if we got bigger, that was definitely something we would have to look into and consider, but we're really focused for this now on the first generation. Yeah, no, that sounds good. And my other question is, while you're building this application, right? So how did you guys test for functionality? What was the methodology? Um, hi, this is Victoria speaking. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I think that it was echoing. So um, we test, there is a test in React um, called app.test. You can test the entire things to make sure the test is running properly. So that is what we use to make sure the test is running properly. And then for individual components, such as a button or things of that nature, we use um, unit testing. So we use Jest to do the unit testing for that. So was the testing done after the development or were you doing it like, uh even before when you got the features, like, uh, I it understand. Was, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off. So no, as we were, as we were building um, the application and components were being made, um, we were able to write, I was able to write um, a, a code for one of the components. And so we're working to integrate that into the application and so that each component can be tested um, in the future. So uh, because of the uh, time uh, time constraints, uh, as you as you see, we, we had a very less amount of time uh, to work on the project. We couldn't uh, really test everything, but uh, we did uh, have a sample test run. Uh, and we are hoping that we can integrate everything into the project in the coming future. Okay, sounds Perfect. good, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Um, in the interest of time, let's move on to the next uh, team's presentation. And then again, I encourage all of you who can stay after if you have additional questions for the teams, we'll have that as an optional event after the close. All right, take it away, data team. Thank you, Marie. Far and away, the best price that life has to offer is a chance to work hard at work worth doing. And that is what Mars has done with the Returnship Program. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to showcase the work that the data team has done. I'm thrilled to be here today. No one can whistle a symphony. It takes a whole orchestra to play it, they say. I've had the opportunity to lead this team with such a rich and varied background. Today, I take pride in introducing the Data Warriors. Hi, I'm Anjana Menon. I have over 10 years of experience in IT and education, inquisitive and very interested in research. I'm currently pursuing my master's in the field of data analytics at Georgia Tech. New ways and new experiences can't satisfy my adventurous self. Hello all, I'm Ashwini Patil, self-motivated and result-driven person with prior experience as IT professional in various industries. I have problem-solving attitude and find the inherent storytelling ability of data very fascinating. That's why the Returnship Data Team was a perfect match. I actively volunteer as data analyst with HighTNow.org 
and my escape is my online music band where i sing hi i'm kam mishra i have over 10 years experience in sourcing and fulfillment of data management i'm primarily driven by my desire to learn new things prior to joining mars i kept my technology skills sharp by taking certification courses and working on it projects growing up my dream job was being a detective and working with data i feel like a data detective the data sherlock holmes i find experimenting in my kitchen and music therapeutic hello everyone i'm pooja minaria i started out my career as an assessment officer in field of social services and healthcare and later on transition to it during my break i was working towards my masters degree in healthcare informatics i also did several online courses to keep updated my knowledge and skills i am a lifelong learner and i and i see i work in different multidisciplinary team i believe versatility is my strength and dance is my passion something that sets me free hi this is priyata ayengar my career journey spans from digital marketing and graphic design to software programming with more than 10 years of experience in the it industry i have found my passion working in the field of data and business intelligence i enjoy facing challenges and never give up until i get something right refinishing old antique furniture is something i enjoy doing in my spare time hi everyone i am vasmati i am a data consultant with priya programming experience in several domains i am always looking out for opportunities to upskill myself after pursuing some online courses i have developed a strong passion for data analytics i can easily fit into any situation i find myself in and express my creative side through various forms of art the mission of mars internship program is to reconnect workers with needed skills as they plug back into the professional world after they have had a break in their careers it's a platform that recognizes the value of experience regardless of a career break we as a team work towards increasing the productivity of the staff at mars through automation and to provide access to relevant business data in an efficient way we aim at streamlining the current processes to eliminate inefficiencies and cost reduction Mars is primarily an ID staffing agency which has grown dramatically the past few years. As the company grew in size, there was a requirement for efficient tools and processes that helped the recruiting staff increase their competitiveness and efficiency. For example, there was no standard tool for the recruiting staff to calculate net margins for a consultant. The recruiters would calculate the numbers manually without using the accurate overhead costs. Also, the process of calculating the recruiting staff's commission was manual and error prone. there was no reporting tool for them to view their own or the team's performance there was also a need for a centralized location for accessing business data for reporting such problems led to a need for a standardized recruitment process and reporting solutions so that the company maintained its competitive edge we took the products through the requirements gathering development test released to production cycle while keeping continuous feedback from our customers as priority to address the business problem of absence of standardized method to calculate margins the team developed a net margin calculator app there was lack of reporting and commissions for the recruitment team and the process of calculation for the same was manual and laborious our next team effort was the development of a commission dashboard to address this need next the team to cognizance of the absence of data integration and centralized reporting at the organization level we understood and implemented the components of a typical data warehouse architecture and developed dashboards to visualize reports with the virtual world we are currently in it was difficult to incorporate the agile philosophy where teams worked closely but the team has managed things brilliantly we followed the scrum methodology worked in sprints of 2 weeks from requirements to design to development to testing with faster turnarounds faster detection of issues and defects active user involvement helped us embrace changing requirements the best requirements architectures artifacts designs emerged from self organizing teams user training manuals maintenance and change management documents and training sessions were conducted before the handover of the products to the organization at regular intervals usually the retrospective meetings the team reflected on how to become more effective and we tuned and adjusted our behavior accordingly 
This leads us to a brief overview of the three solutions our team has developed. The first solution is the net margin calculator. The challenge for the company here was that the recruiting staff did not have a standardized tool to derive the consultant pay rate and calculate net margins. After evaluation of various tools, we decided to use Microsoft Power Apps as it did not require installation of any proprietary software and anyone with an internet connection could easily use it across the organization. Our team came up with a solution of developing two apps, the admin console app, where the admin staff would easily change the various overhead costs when required. And then the net margin calculator app, which would incorporate the numbers from the admin console app and calculate the net margin. The result of those solutions is that the staff across the company are using the apps actively to consistently maximize the margins and provide competitive pricing to the customers. Here is a snapshot of net margin calculator app. All the fixed costs in this calculator are controlled by the admin console app and auto-populated on the screen and thus limiting any human errors. Here, a recruiter John can enter the bill rate and pay rate and select various overhead costs. The calculated results of the candidate's net margin and commission spread is then displayed on the direct hire or contract basis. This information allows John to see the impact of various costs on the net margin and negotiate accordingly with the candidate. Emily, the senior director of client delivery, did not have the ability to track the team's progress and set clear and measurable goals for the team. Recruiters needed to be motivated with their placements, a technology-driven process for analyzing data and presenting actionable information in a seamless manner was the need of the hour. Our implementations employed Microsoft Power BI technology for gathering, analyzing, interpreting data from internal sources. We designed the dimensional data model for identifying the key business processes, a cloud-based analytical dashboard supporting interactions with the data, such as drilling down into the underlying details was built. The result is a strategic dashboard that provides a quick overview for Emily to monitor the business performance and forecast. Here, we have a sample screenshot of the commission dashboard. The dashboard has two separate views, one for the account manager and one for the recruiters. This is a sample view for an account manager where Sarah, the account manager, can view her and her recruiting team's commissions for a selected time frame. She can compare her actual margin versus the expected margin, as well as get a tabular overview of the quarterly margin details. She can also view the graph showing an individual recruiter's contribution to the total commission made by her. Here is a screenshot of the recruiter report. The recruiter here can at a glance see how they're performing. They can see the commission and the margin earned by them based on their date selection. All graphs have drilled through pages. The drill through pages give details about the candidates like the margin and hours put in by the candidate, the actual and expected margin, the commission percentage and amount earned for the time period by the account manager and for the recruiters. The company struggled with centralized data management. The business expressed a need to centralize data engineering and data governance. Consolidation of technology tools needed for analytics and enterprise level reporting was another crucial requirement. To get to an efficient solution, the team evaluated that the MSBI suite of products will be the best option to achieve the desired goals. We created data models, conducted data analysis, performed data cleansing, and exported the data to Power BI for creating dashboards and reports for the end users. By developing end-to-end -end BI solution, we converted the tedious process of looking through endless sheets of tabular data to a much simpler, faster, and user-friendly visual depiction of data. The team understood the entire warehousing lifecycle and was successful in getting the business data into an SQL Server warehouse and getting it ready for reporting in Power BI. Here, let's take a look at the architecture. SAP Fieldglass is a cloud-based vendor management system used by organizations to procure and manage talented workforce. Data feeds from field class is consumed into backend systems at Mars as shown in the workflow. Reports in field class are scheduled to run on a daily basis, which then get routed via Power Automate 
placing the incoming files onto a SharePoint site. Schedule SSIS jobs kick in and initiates the ETL process to ingest the operational data into the SSIS tabular model. Tabular data model is in memory and it increases the usability performance. Tabular models compress data very well. The data is then fed into a Power BI dashboard, which combines data from Mars's internal candidate tracking system, which is a MySQL database. We are yet to take it to finish, but have laid out a strong architectural foundation for the Envisage solution. Let me give you a quick tour of one of the reports we have created. By mapping out job posting and candidate placement data visually, it is not only easier to digest and understand important information, it is easier to discover key patterns, significant trends, and compelling correlations which may have otherwise been challenging to unveil. The chart shows the data retrieved from SSAS tabular model. It captures trends over time aggregated by month, quarter, and year. Features include use of filters for date and company selection, the number of job postings, and interviews over a time period. Customer service excellence has always been and will always be one of the critical competitive advantages for any team. These are some of the testimonials from our stakeholders. While Emily, the senior director of client delivery, conveys that the tools are immense benefit to the recruiting team. Mary Backfield, our mentor, endorses the technical architecture laid out. They are the words of encouragement and support that validates the team's continuous efforts. Overall, the business has largely benefited by saving recruiters time, reducing errors, increasing the efficiency and accuracy of business processes. The Returnship Program was a golden opportunity to think ahead about our goals to develop expertise in the field of data analytics. We participated in development workshops and got hands-on experience in various technologies in the data space. Building systems from ground up, laying the architectural foundation for systems produced, and following it through the entire development cycle, given the tight schedules, is worthy of mention. We delivered value by producing software that helped Mars employees to be more productive in their daily jobs by applying automation for better and accurate results. Every experience is an opportunity to learn and grow. On behalf of my team, we are thankful to Mars team to give us an another chance, a new beginning and embracing us. We would like to thank you all everyone present here who came out to support us. Even the sun tries to shine each day, they say. Keep at it and emerge as the sun. Thank you, Mars, to help us shine through. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We'll open it up for questions for the team. Any questions? I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, uh, for automation, uh, are they using some tool or just they are like manually triggering the job, the SSIS jobs? Like for schedule, are, you, are they using any scheduling tools or? Yeah, um, we have used a SQL um, SQL Server reagent to schedule the jobs mm -hmm. uh, to automate uh, the processes there. Okay, so it is like when the file will arrive, you will just run the jobs like that? No, so uh, you know all the jobs throughout will be automated right from field glass. You can schedule them to run at uh, the reports at a particular time. Fine. Okay. Um, and uh, even through uh, you know Power Automate enables the automatic uh, you know updating of files from SharePoint and uh, you know, triggering happens automa mm -hmm. automatically. Okay. Um, and SSIS jobs are also autom can be automated via uh, SQL Server agent. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I have a question. Uh, I was just wondering what what accomplishment from the program, and any of you, I guess, can answer. But what was the biggest accomplishment that you felt like you got from the program, going through it? I can start. I would love for my team members to add on. 
um i think uh, the very fact that we could incubate ourselves right back into the corporate software development uh, world and working with a team with with such a diverse background i think that was the most valuable thing for us at least for me so you know the confidence to get back into the workforce and with renewed skill sets that was something that that we really value yes for us to it's a team collaboration and to working together again with this pandemic situation so it's a uh, immense valuable for us we learned so much with us with each other and even after the working hours we helped each other like we knew each other before this project i have a question uh, great job uh, obviously the data seems to be historical uh, did you try to explore predictive models at all to try to understand future margins and future scenarios uh not yet um the entire suite of uh, msbi toolset was completely new to all of us so that in itself was a very big achievement for the team to achieve uh, you know such results within 12 weeks um that was itself a big feather on our caps <laughs> so um yes that is something you know uh, we all encourage each other to learn and i think uh, this uh, team without doubt will um, easily adapt to any you know thing thrown at them any other questions from anyone all right then i think abby it's over to you so we'll give abby a minute or two what will happen next is we'll break you into five breakout rooms for networking we will have uh, cohort members in each of the rooms so a couple of cohort members and a person from mars and just give everyone a chance to network get to meet some new faces and have a a casual chat nothing formal so once abby puts you in a room or it pops up to go to your breakout room please do so and uh, we'll bring you back here at the appointed time It's always interesting to wait to see people start to disappear. The suspense. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll have to add some waiting music, Mary. That's a good idea. Hey, uh, hey. While we wait, guys, this is Raj Nambuthri. I'm calling in from Manpower Group. I just joined the the tail end of this. Maybe picked up the last five minutes, but just a couple of questions, guys. I'm really impressed with what I heard. And uh, I run a global analytics uh, COE, so you know this is really uh, very exciting and interesting in terms of some of the work that you guys are doing. Uh, a couple of questions uh, in terms of just one broad. what was the biggest kind of challenge as you guys faced right uh, in starting to build this uh, just interested to know and then uh, one i heard uh, i think david it was you asking about power, you know predictive analytics that is the future right that's where we go and i don't know if you guys were talking about margins and uh, so i this the entire concept what you guys were trying <laughs> to build but predictive analytics is where we are going and that that is really how we are looking at our business whether you know that's power bi models or everything we're building in our global analytics coe so that's really one comment i wanted to pass along as well for you guys uh because that really uh truly takes the business to a whole new level but anyway uh question was really what what were the some of the challenges really interested to hear hey and i see jasmine here on too so jasmine <laughs> Let me turn on my video. It's a video party here, so let me turn. <laughs> <the video. laughs> 
<laughs> I always forget doing that. And Jasmine's my counterpart from Manpower Group. She heads uh, diversity programs at Manpower Group. So here, when we talked to uh, Rashi and Sapan and team, and it, this was really one we were looking forward to. So very excited to be here alongside you guys. Yeah, sure. Thank so you. Quick, yeah. yeah. Two quick things, Raj. Um, one is your question specific to what the challenges were putting the program, the overall program together, or was it directed to the prior team in terms of their challenges? Oh, Raj. Was that a question back to me? Yeah, I was just looking for clarification. Was your question about the challenges putting the program together overall, or was it to the specific just overall, data team? Right? I mean, overall. Just general, I want to understand broad challenges because you know this is unique. Uh, what I know about the program, you know, new entrants or you know maybe coming back to the workforce, it comes with a unique set of challenges, both on the personal and professional front, uh, mm -hmm. and how you navigate this. Right? Just keen to know. Yeah, I think for us, we learned a lot over the past, let's say, 16 weeks in putting the program together. Um, I would say recruitment is a challenge. We still haven't found our stride on the best way to get the message out to folks who aren't, you know, they're maybe working at home with their families. They're not necessarily on LinkedIn every day, right? So how mm -hmm. do you reach that audience of people who want to come back? Um, so if you have any great ideas on that front, let us know. I know that's one particular challenge we've had. Um, in putting the program together, we were very open with the returners when they came to us at their pilot group. So they have been phenomenal about giving us feedback about what's working for them, what's not working. Um, so I'd say from my perspective, it's, it's been a good journey. Um, recruitment's still probably the biggest challenge. Rashi, I didn't know if you wanted to add to that. Yeah, no, I agree. So Raj, it's just a pilot program for us. It's been a learning across the board. Uh, teams have just amount of confidence and growth they've displayed. So, you know, in in our running the program, we knew that the technical upskilling would be, uh, quote unquote, the easy part, because these women are all motivated. You all saw their performance today, their presentation. They can, they know how to use the resources that are available to us. So I think part of uh, what we really focused it on was how do we regain that confidence? How do we basically ground them into that architectural viewpoint of what they were solving for? And um, you know we're thankful to the community of uh, volunteers, the speakers that came along. And I think that's what made the difference. Uh, and again, not undermining the technical skills they've acquired, but we really do believe that was just only one part of it. Uh, but overall, to Mary's point, we're learning um, and really happy to have you all be here. I know Raj, you missed a lot of uh, the beginning part. We're happy to share the recording with anyone that uh, came on late or left early, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then that's to great. the... Yeah, predictive. Totally agree with you. Um, we were trying to solve some of our own internal business problems initially, as you could see with the projects. Totally agree. Getting to predictive is great. Um, thanks for putting that bug in Rashi's ear. That'll be on my plate tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> but it's great. Um, Abby, I'm not sure quite where we're at.